Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to take stock at the end of a significant month for British politics, May 2020, and about to start what I predict will be a truly momentous month in June, and how Keir Starmer needs to focus on breaking Boris Johnson before the summer, ideally. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, in the battle between Labour and the Conservatives, to be allowed to form the British government, Labour are always at a bit of a disadvantage. Not only is the left-wing vote split amongst a number of parties, especially with the rise of the SNP in Scotland, but the bulk of the media by distribution may always be counted upon to bat for the Conservatives. Now, by contrast, Labour basically have the Mirror and the Guardian newspapers. There are other publications on much smaller distributions. The Independent tends to be favourable as well, but that's because they don't make a virtue of trying to mislead the people. They tend to be fair, which tends to favour Labour mostly, um, even though it's not a socialist newspaper. The Conservatives, on the other hand, can always count upon the Sun, the Mail, the Telegraph, the Express, the Times and the Financial Times for support. And it's not just about the number of titles. The combined readership is way higher for those sections of the media that back the Conservatives. The BBC, of course, are supposed to refrain from bias, but that is often not the case. It's been especially bad in recent years as senior positions within the political news team are now occupied entirely by those who openly support the Tory party. And the government, for their part, have not been shy about threatening the BBC in order to force them to behave when certain sections outside of that political news group decide to misbehave by reporting the facts. But in this video, what I want to do is focus less on the Conservatives as, as an entity and more on Boris Johnson specifically, because at the moment this is the weak link. And this is because he has lost support big time. So the Times and the Financial Times, first of all, they have been against his decision not to seek a Brexit extension from the start. They are very much opposed to a no-deal Brexit and have been especially scathing of this since it became apparent that the coronavirus pandemic means that there is no chance of negotiating anything this year. So he lost nothing there as such because he didn't have their support at the start of May, you know, and a but these papers do tend to throw their lot in with the Conservatives. And as such, if you were supporting Boris Johnson, or at least supporting the Conservatives, you don't really want to see them tearing the new Conservative leader to pieces. And the Financial Times tend to be quite matter of fact. It doesn't preach to a populist readership. It's a, it's a paper for wealthy businessmen and women and those interested in economic news. As papers go, it's biased. Yes, they're all biased, but it's grown up about it. It is actually, you can read it. Um, and, and, you know, even when you read something, you don't agree with it. You don't get angry or anything because it's not, it's not emotively written. And yet this was the opening paragraph in an article this weekend. At least one million people in Britain are estimated to have lost their jobs since March. Dominic Cummings is not one of them. That's all you need to know about this week in, in British politics. I mean, that is absolutely savage, isn't it? You don't normally see that sort of article in the Financial Times. It's not that they never report on political topics, but it's not common to do so without a direct link to economic news, economic affairs. They don't even have a politics section on their website. So although Johnson had lost the Times and the Financial Times anyway, they have become more hostile towards him in recent weeks. The only thing keeping the Times from savaging him every day is that he has removed the lockdown, something they wanted quite badly. It's actually quite strange reading the Times because on the one hand, they want the lockdown removed without it being safe to do so, but at the same time, they're against a hard Brexit or a no deal Brexit. Really odd, eerily really odd. So for some reason anyway, but Johnson has lost support from papers where he did have it at the start of the month. Now, he first of all lost the Telegraph during his second Prime Minister's questions with Keir Starmer. The first one he held was really bad, but they probably expected him to go away and work on it after that. He didn't and was absolutely mauled by Starmer again. And that was it. The Telegraph had had enough. They were absolutely merciless in their criticism of Johnson's performance. 
They have since attacked his leadership a number of times, not the least over the Dominic Cummings scandal as well. So he's well and truly lost them. And this is the paper that very recently paid him over a quarter of a million quid a week, a year, sorry, to write a weekly column. Um, then there was Johnson and the Mail. So he's lost the Mail as well with his handling of the Cummings revelations about breaking lockdown rules. They absolutely brutally savaged Dominic Cummings, especially. Uh, they, they were much gentler on Boris Johnson personally, but they were critical of the way in which Johnson decided to handle it. They even produced a page on Thursday, I think it was, you know, of polling results, which showed that Johnson was hemorrhaging credibility amongst the public. To even just scan down this page, you could come, if you're a Daily Mail reader, to only one conclusion, and that is that Boris Johnson is going to cost this party the next general election if he's still involved in 2024. But then the most amazing of all, you know, the Sun and the Express were still covering for him. I would expect that to continue. But the Spectator has turned on his leadership. Now, I didn't mention the Spectator earlier on because, it's, again, it's not one of these widely distributed papers. It is there. You'll see it on newsstands. Um, but it, it's not well known outside of right wing circles, I would say. Uh, it is ultra right wing. Uh, it's a paper edited by Dominic Cummings' wife. So you would think they would back him to the hilt. But it has just published an article with the headline, Boris Johnson isn't fit to lead. Now, this is quite astonishing. Don't get me wrong, they've never actually been in awe of him. <laughs> they have never actually, they've written a lot of critical articles about him. Just a year ago, they ran the headline, Boris is a weak man posing as a tough guy. But they backed his agenda to the hilt and therefore his leadership. So they weren't necessarily in favour of him becoming leader of the Labour uh, of the Labour Party, the Conservative Party. But, you know, they were backing him sort of. And now it's gone completely the other way. In the space of just a few weeks now, Boris Johnson has lost three right wing papers that were supporting him at the start of the month. He may hope to get them back, of course, but consider how he lost them. So in the case of the Telegraph, he lost them because of his inability to match Keir Starmer in a parliamentary fistfight. This is not going to improve for him. So how can he win back the Telegraph? In the case of the Mail and the Spectator, it's his appalling handling of the coming scandal, particularly his lack of leadership, because it doesn't matter how you look at it. What are we getting from the Dominic Cummings scandal other than Boris Johnson depends so much on Dominic Cummings, so much that he will throw every ounce of political credibility he has in order to save Cummings' position. That shows you that he does not believe that he can carry on as Prime Minister without Dominic Cummings. doesn't matter how you slice that scandal. That is the, the only conclusion you can come to. Now, the scandal itself, the, the particular scandal, will, I think, become less newsworthy now. Unless Tory backbenchers suddenly decide to make a major issue of it next week. I don't think that's... It's not impossible, but I don't think it likely. But the key thing is this. Although that scandal may sort of fade away over time, although it will be brought back for the next election, don't worry about that, there will be other scandals. I mean, where Boris Johnson is concerned, and when you consider those around him in Cabinet as well, Priti Patel, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Dominic Raab, people like this, you know, scandals are never far away from them. If even one further scandal this year is handled as badly as the Dominic Cummings affair, then you would think even strong supporters of him will have to consider moving along sooner rather than later. And, and the danger, as I've discussed before, is from the Conservatives' point of view, if they get rid of Boris Johnson, then whoever replaces him will have to lead the party into the next election. You know, because if not, if they replace him with someone and then they have to get rid of that person and get another person in, then it will, the party will be seen to be in complete disarray. And, and you could argue there was a certain amount of disarray with the Conservative Party over the last few years, but there also was with Labour as well. Now you'd be contrasting it with a Labour Party that is beginning to look like a coordinated unit. And it's only just started. Imagine what it will look like in a year's time. But if they get rid of Johnson too early, then the mess of Brexit 2021 will taint the reputation of his successor. 
I have no doubt, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I have no doubt they would want to keep Johnson on until Brexit is actually genuinely done as far as they are concerned. Blame it all on him. Let him work through the crises that will emerge as a result of it and then have a relatively clean successor claim that they will fix it all. They'll fix all this mess if only people will vote him or her a big majority in the general election. Remember that pitch last December? So Labour's priority now is to heap so much pressure on Johnson that he cracks completely. Force the Conservatives to have to get rid of him earlier, certainly earlier than they'd ideally like to, to give them time to work on breaking his successor as well in good time for the election. Now, costing Johnson the support of three right-wing papers was a pretty good start for Starmer this month. Let's see what June brings. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.